A lot of traders and investors often overlook the power of the ETF. What is an ETF? Well, it's an exchange traded fund. That means that you can get access into people's point of view that they've put into a basket, their idea into that basket for you to actually trade by exchange. That means they're accessible to pretty much anyone. And that could be anything from say a commodity like platinum and the underlying stocks that go, you know, into that sort of idea. Or it might be, you know, a stock sector like AI or crypto. You know, there are thousands out there for you to play with. Now in this video, I'm going to take a look at some of my favorites and ones I think could be interesting and maybe an alternative um, you know, way into the ETF world. If you want you know, to gain exposure to a sector idea, like maybe you think AI is going to take off this year, but you don't want to buy the individual stock, you want you know, access to that bundle, that sector, then I've got a whole load of ETFs for you here. I've got some really good ones and some ones I think maybe you should think carefully about going into, especially in 23. Maybe they're better in the longer term. But like I said, some good, the bad and the ugly all for you here in the video. So with that, let's get on with the analysis. So first up, I've got a couple of ETFs that cover artificial intelligence. Now, if you're on social media, you've just seen ChatGBT being you know, beaten to death on all sorts of different um, platforms, TikTok, you know, YouTube Shorts, the lot. You know, it's really, really popular at the moment. But it just shows you the evolution of the industry and how it's actually becoming a lot more mainstream. Real big companies, Microsoft, Google, you know, Intel, all investing in this stuff to change our future. And if you believe it's going to take off, then let's say I've got a couple of ETFs here for you. Now on the left hand side we have one by Direxion. It's the Daily Robotics Artificial Intelligence and Automation Index Ball two times shares ticker UBOT and I've just got the weekly chart set up here. At the moment the trend is down so it's not just the right time to buy yet. Volume also has fallen off so it's a watcher this one but as you can see plenty of upside and can it get to those highs and through to maybe 70 mid 80s which in terms of a return would give you a very nice you know, 400 odd percent return you know that's quite dramatic but you know if AI takes off that sort of ETF is one to have a look at now on the right hand side we have another one, the Global X Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF. As you can see, similar shape um, to our previous Direxion one. And again, it's showing that pullback and starting to turn a little bit more bullish um, to the upside, consolidating around that sort of zone. Again, trend is down and we'd be looking for similar type of percentage moves on up and this one through to maybe 50 if it can crack on. So that is two uh, ETFs in the AI world. They're my picks, my favourites from that area, that sector, and they compromise, you know, com comprise a um, underlying basket of assets that those guys think are going to perform well in the AI sector. Now, if you want to learn out further about these, you know, it's very easy to Google them and drill down to who the components are. But to give you an idea of some of the stocks in, you know, bots there, that's the Robotics Artificial Intelligence ETF. Then you've got companies like Intuitive, NVIDIA, Cognex, Dynatrace, you know, um, UiPath, Maxar Tech, you know, they're some of the um, bigger holdings that make up the larger part of that ETF. So a good exposure there. Now, next up is cannabis. Now, this is one of my sectors to avoid. And as you can see from the chart, it's been a pretty horrible, you know, last few years for that area. Really, this is one to stay out of unless 
regulations seriously change, especially in the US, to you know give us some sort of hope of upside. You know there is plenty of upside there, but at the moment, you know price down there. You know let's see how much you know they've fallen off you know, from the highs to the currently you know, down over 90 odd percent from those highs. Really not good and trends as well. It's it's you know not a very nice picture still down there this one here is the et fmg alternative harvest etf ticker mj um, this is my pick of the bunch so if you are into um, your cannabis and you do think it's going to turn around then this is the one i would take a look at and you know it's a sorry picture at the moment for that area a lot of volume at these low um, prices yeah, in terms of upside if it can turn itself around you know you could hope to maybe get up to you know 13 14 area maybe 19 20 um, but that's about it but this is one I would stay out of unless the fundamentals change quite significantly but let's just have a look at some of the stocks involved in that ETF. So we've got the old favourites in this ETF. You know, we've got Kronos, Tilray, Canopy, Growth, Grow Generation. Been around for a while. Another one, Aurora Cannabis, have you know had their highs and, like I said, seen them pull off. Another one, Scott's Miracle Grow, in there as well. So a lot there, but at the moment, I think 23, not a great year for cannabis. Now another one of my areas to avoid, and remember you can short ETFs as well, so if you're bearish, you know, you've got that point of view, no harm shorting them, although these two here in front of you, they come from the crypto world, there's not a lot of shorting left in them. And as you can see from the left, we've got the Valkyrie Bitcoin Miners ETF, and you can see you know, that's fallen quite dramatically to its lows of 86% it has had a little bounce the last few weeks and I think you're going to see some FOMO in there you know the Bitcoin world crypto world anyway which might have the bounce effect but fundamentally at the moment that whole area is not looking that tasty especially for this year it might not be the case in the longer term and we're just looking ahead for next year and again on the right I've got another option for you there it's the iShares Trust, iShares Blockchain and Tech ETF, and it's a similar shape, you know, to the chart. Um, again, plenty of potential, but is there any gas left in the tank? At the moment, it's an area that I am avoiding. Now, the next area of ETFs, I'm going to call Green Energy Solutions. They all sort of do what they say on the tin. In the top left. Global X Wind Energy ETF, and you can see it hasn't been doing all that well, but it's starting to turn on up. And then top right, we've got Hydrogen Direction Hydrogen ETF, and again, it has been in a downward spiral, but there is more of an interest in hydrogen um, as a solution, maybe as an alternative to the EV sector uh, if it can take off you know plenty of good upside as well bottom left solar energy always a popular one this one and you know it hasn't been doing too bad it had a great period sort of post covid or during covid so when it started then it has tailed off a bit and gone a bit sideways so we'd be looking for like i say maybe a break up of that sort of trend line into this area like I say, solar energy, very popular. And then we've got a more generic um, one in this bottom left here. Uh, so bottom right. And it's the iShares S&P Global Clean Energy Index Fund. So that's giving you more of an overall balance in the whole of that sector. And again, it's shown a similar shape to actually the solar power. It's trading above its 200 moving average, which is this white line here. And again, it just pulled back into that sort of boring sideways type range, but plenty of upside. So let's just have a quick look at the iShares 
S&P Global Clean Energy Index Fund, see who are some of the constituents of that fund. So the biggest holding, Enphase Energy, then Consolidated Edison Co., First Solar, Solar Edge, Plug Power, Sunrun, Northland Power. So some interesting companies there to give you that exposure to clean energy if you think it's going to take off this year. And, you know, the way the world is moving at the moment, then it could be a popular one. Now, this is an ETF area sector that I really like the look at. It's semiconductors. Now, they've had a pretty bad year, as you can see, or bad year or so, you know, down nearly... 50% at those lows before bouncing on up. Look at the way it bounces off the 200 moving average. Now, it's a great sector, it's the future. You know, it goes into so many different industries and there's some really good companies underlying it. And upside wise, you know, there's plenty of potential there. You know, back to those highs, 557, 719. Like I said, this one is the iShares Semiconductor ETF, ticker SO. XX and you know from where it is now to those highs that's you know 80 90 percent return so pretty decent return so let's just have a quick look at some of the component players in this ETF as you can see over in the bottom right top holdings percentage you know Broadcom Texas Instruments Nvidia Qualcomm AMD you know KLA NXP, Applied Materials, they've got some good names in there and I, you know, could be a good one to be playing this year. Now here's another area I really like the look of and we're going international here, we're going to China. Now, Chinese recovery, um, quite possible and if so, there's a lot of upside still in the ETFs available. Now, I've got three for you here. On the left, we've got the ProShares Ultra FTSE China 50, focusing on 50 specific stocks. Trading below its you know, longer term moving average, but I say it's starting to shape up nicely to the upside. Then we've got in the middle the Direxian um, daily CSI 300. That's the Shanghai Index 300 shares. And again, the pattern hasn't been great over the last year or so, but starting to pick on up again. And then on the right hand side, if you are interested in exposure more specifically to Internet tech stocks in China, then this could be the one for you. It's the Crane Shares Trust, Crane Shares CSI China, you know, Internet ETF. And again, a similar looking chart type. Um, pushing on up last few months have been quite strong and trends on all of them similar picture starting to merge more towards a hopefully bullish cross coming this year so next up an area that i think is going to have a good year as well in 2023 and that is commodities now i've also honed in on some of the commodities i think that will be you know pretty decent over the next 365 days or so and remember each of these commodity based ETFs the underlying is built on the stocks that you know have that exposure to that particular asset type so it might be miners you know producers consumers that sort of thing so do your further research if you like them but we'll go through my five that I like and one that I think that's going to be maybe not quite as good this year and maybe one to stay away from. So first up we have the Global X Uranium ETF so if you want to get exposure to the uranium nuclear power type sector then this could be the ETF for you and looking at that giving it about a 93-94% upside so you can almost double your money over year on that one and the trend has started to look a bit more um, bullish there down as we can see uh, volume not picking up quite as much just yet but maybe time that in if it spikes on above one of these you know key Fibonacci lines we've got one here at 22 at the moment next up we have the granite shares platinum shares ETF now I've been talking a lot about platinum over um, the last few months on the channel got a bit of a supply and demand issue that could drive the prices on up higher this year and 
if so then we've got about 40 50 percent upside and you know this etf is one way of getting into that now next up is a gold based etf now i wouldn't normally have uh, gold in there granite shares gold trust shares is the etf here but with crypto complex struggling at the moment investors might look to pump more money into the gold area so it could provide some upside and as you can see by the fibonacci's you know there's deal you know if you can get through those highs a good long way still to go next up we have the ipath a series b bloomberg copper sub index now i've gone for copper here and it sort of fits in nicely with a return to you know some sort of success for china simply because china hoovers up 50 60 percent of the metal it's a good bellwether on what's going on over there and if china takes off and in you know the sort of recessionary period that we are going through peters out then there's more investment coming in copper's used in everything you know good upside and that's one way in then we have the global x lithium and battery tech etf really driven around the ev sector um, one of the key components to the batteries and this is an etf that's going to give you exposure to those stocks in that sector and if you think the ev sector is going to recover then again good upside bouncing around its 200 moving average and like i say a way into that world finally we've got an oil based um, etf now this is one i don't like so much not to say it won't have a reasonable year it's i'm looking for more outperformers you know it had very good you know period of time the energy sector as we've seen but i think it's just going to be a bit quieter over the coming year unless there's some major fundamental shifts then i think compared to the other commodity ones that i've shown you that this is one maybe to maybe um just put on the back burners a bit this one's the direction shares etf trust um oil services etf um again check it out if you want to think about it but i say i think i'm going to put that one on the back burner so if you want something a bit more consistent i've got this dividend equity etf from schwab ticker schd and as you can see from recent history last 10 years really nice steady growth but i still think it's got some good upside there you know from where it is at the moment 70 to 100 wouldn't be out the equation you know, 109 110 sort of area maybe it can push on further so some decent growth in there really um, and in terms of companies that make up the etf so we've got a good selection of well-known stocks in this one across all sorts of sectors broadcom verizon home depot biggest of the holdings there but you've got cisco blackrock coca-cola amgen lockheed pfizer U.S. Bank Corp, Newmont Mining, so a really interesting bunch there for a U.S. dividend equity play. So tech stocks took a bashing over the last year, and surely you know they are the future of the world, so they've got to bounce back sometime. And if you want to trade the Nasdaq 100, which is pretty much made up of tech-based stocks, then you know you can do through an etf so if you can't buy trading futures or options or some other means get into it because it's too costly then this could be an alternative for you if you think it's going to bounce back up and we've got one here from the direction ticker qqqe and it replicates the nasdaq 100 and as you can see you know if you put the two up against each other nasdaq and this they'd look pretty similar and have a look at how those bounce on that 200 moving average hovering all around there at the moment can it turn around and bounce back up let's hope so and it'll be a good etf to follow but if you want to get into more specifics specific sectors within um, the tech area we've already looked at ai but i'm just going to have a look at a few others now that might be of interest so if you're into cybersecurity, we've got the Global X Cybersecurity ETF. Hasn't been doing that great since sort of the latter part of last year. But again, it's one of those sectors 
that are growing more and more relevant to everyday life so if you're bullish that then you know the upsides could be quite significant for that ETF back to a more generalist um, tech uh, based ETF from Vanguard um, as you can see a bit similar to the Nasdaq 100 but different component parts and potential you know, as it's hovering around this 200 moving average for a good upside break and fine I suppose this one could have been included in um, entertainment but I've put it in the tech uh, it's the Global X video games and esports ETF a growing sector um, more and more popular hasn't done that well uh, for the last you know sort of year but starting to warm up again and there's a lot of upside just to get back to its previous highs which we've seen until sort of March 21 and then can it break on upwards who knows but it is one of the better um, ETFs in that area so as we're all aware the travel and tourism sector took a massive bashing over COVID and as things you know tidy themselves up and the problems there ease then surely these are you know stocks sectors that should be recovering and bouncing up and the the biggest ETF is the one you see before you in that area US global jets and in the chart it's starting to warm up again bounced off these you know recent lows um, upsides well, there's quite a bit to it 34 35 if you can get back to the highs and then up into the early 40s but what makes up well I'll give you an idea of what makes up some of the component parts of this ETF. and I quite like the mix of the stocks in you know this ETF because it sort of reflects the bigger picture not just the airlines which the ticker jet suggests and if you look down in there you've got your typicals at American Airlines Delta United Southwest Air Canada etc etc but you've also got companies like TripAdvisor Expedia you know those peripheral businesses that all are key um, to that sector working American Airlines Delta United being the biggest double digit holdings there and our second ETF in that sector is the Invesco Dynamic Leisure and Entertainment. So a different angle on, you know, that sector as a whole. It's been, you know, more, you know, slightly better than the Jets ETF in terms of performance, creating that nice wedge pattern. Hopefully for a break on upwards. Let's have a quick look at the components. So another really interesting mix of stocks here as well. We've got Live Nation and Yum China as the biggest holdings. We've got Chipotle, you know, McDonald's, Southwest Airlines, Madison Square Gardens, WWE Wrestling, United Airlines, Paramount, Hyatt Hotels, you know, Fox Core, Texas Roadhouse. A whole interesting swathe of stocks there making up that leisure and entertainment group um, ETF, which like I say, if things warm up again, you know the economy starts helping itself out and um, getting more bullish then this could be an ETF to invest in now my last set of ETFs we're going to look at are all based around EVs that's electrical vehicles both of my picks here have a slightly different angle slightly different component parts on the left we've got the Global X autonomous and electric vehicles ETF and on the right, we've got the Crane Shares Electric Vehicles and Future Mobility Index. And you can see from both, it hasn't been that great over you know, the last you know, year, year and a half. But if you're a believer in this sector, then you know there's a lot of upside to buy back into. Let's just have a quick look at those Crane Shares um, component parts. So here's the top 10 holdings. We've got companies in like Samsung, Aptiv, Albemarle, Geely, Lee, Bide, Tesla. So a good mix in there covering you know, a global selection there of different areas of EV you know, technology and future tech. I've given you 29 ETFs to look at. Let's summarise that list one final time we've got at the top U bottom bots are both AI based and MJ a cannabis one then 
a couple of crypto based WGMI and IBLC then scrolling on up we have the green energy brigade windy tan H gen and ICLN then a couple of um, semiconductors SOXL and SOXX then China heading into China XPP CHAU and then K web then big bunch of commodities euro uranium PLTM platinum bar gold JJC copper lit lithium ONG oil then we had that one off uh, dividend one from Schwab SCHD then some tech QQQE for the Nasdaq 100 play bug VGT and hero and the last two sectors we've got something around travel and tourism jets and PEJ and finally EV based DRIV and cars so there you go hopefully a short list of ETFs that you can get involved with for the coming year now in a video I'm going to put out pretty soon I'm going to show you exactly where and the sort of practical sides of trading those and that will be coming out like I say very soon so please hit the subscribe and bell buttons and you'll receive notification of when that video is out and if you'd like to learn you know the art of trading how to take your trading to the next level in this coming year then I've got a great playlist it's called the ultimate free trading course it's all on YouTube and it's sitting there waiting for you to take a look and here is the link and access to that coming up now